first for Coach Leach. Go ahead and get us started, Theo. Did you get a did you, did you get a sense of the excitement around Pullman on, on Saturday? I don't know if you spent any time around town or just kind of the, the aftermath of the, the win. Uh, not really around town. You know, it was really cool out there on the field, which a uh, ton of people. And then, um, uh, you know, traffic, and you could tell everybody's excited, honking horns and stuff like that. And then I had a bunch of people in town that <coughs> kind of randomly before the season decided this was a game they were going to come visit. So, um, you know, I was just pretty much at the house spending time with them. So we had a whole bunch of folks there, including uh, – uh, you know, Andy, a guy that uh, coached in England that, uh, you know, took me over there one time. He brought his two sons over. And so it was all pretty random that uh, it happened to be this game, and all of a sudden, boom, it's game day. So it was pretty good. When you uh, kind, of, kind of watched some of that third quarter, could you get a sense of, a better sense of what happened offensively, defensively, why, why both units kind of regressed? Well, I think I think the um, I think a couple things. I don't think our tempo was the same as it was the first half. I think that the ball didn't necessarily down uh, bounce our way, um, and then you know we had to outlast it. And it was um, <clears throat> as long as a, a, a streak of just real powerful play as the first half was. Uh, the third quarter I thought was kind of long too, and then you just kind of fight through it, just keep doing your job, which we did. And then I think we won the fourth quarter, so. Uh, Do you have any sort of relationship with Coach David Shaw? I know him just from meetings. You know, he's a nice guy. Uh, uh, you know, nice guy. And uh, uh, I was on a Nike trip with him. But, you know, uh, seems like a good guy. Does a good job. Why do you think he's been so successful over the years at Stanford? Well, um, they were pretty good when he got there, you know, and I think he's done a pretty good job uh, keeping that wheel spinning, you know. Uh, right now, you guys are leading the Pac-12 in sacks. What can you say about the job that Tracy and the defense have done on getting pressure on the quarterback? I think uh, Tracy and uh, Jeff Phelps, our defensive line coach, I think they've done a good job, do a really good job uh, coaching technique. Um, have some little wrinkles from one week to the next that I think have uh, proven to be pretty challenging. And then our players uh, play really hard, and I think that's been key too. Is getting pressure on the quarterback, is that kind of like one of the common denominators of derailing any kind of offense? You would say? I think that's the most important thing a defense uh, does. I think, I mean, I, uh, uh, there might be something else I'd have to think about, but I think the most important thing a defense does is affect the quarterback, somehow find a way to affect the quarterback. You have to affect the quarterback. I mean, there's a difference between sacking him and affecting him, but uh, you have to at least affect him. And, uh, you know, so I think that's very important. We've talked about keeping the outside noise outside the team after a big win on game day. Uh, how do you plan on keeping doing that throughout the rest of the season? Really reinforce it, just reinforce it. And, you know, hopefully we're disciplined enough to do it. We'll see, you know. You had a chance to, to read the Yahoo story that uh, kind of disclosed a, a few text messages that you had sent to Larry Scott and different officials in the Pac-12. Yeah, I read the story. I can't comment on it though. You know, if you were if you were kind of running the, the review process, the re replay process, how would you kind of go about it? And, and would you make any changes, or is it just kind of up to you? I, you're going to have to write that one yourself. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What part of Stanford's team are you most impressed with? Uh, well, you know, their defensive front's always um, been the toughest part, and I'm kind of curious. We'll see how they are this year. And then uh, – uh, but they have some new faces. Um, <clears throat> but overall, just defensively, and uh, uh, their front, I think, is and, – and then – Offensively, I think uh, traditionally their O-line's pretty good. Now, Stanford's kind of changed their style of play. They're throwing it a bunch now. You know, they used to always be grind, 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 play action. And uh, and now they're throwing it quite a bit. So uh, it's a little different to mention. It's a, it's Offensively, it's a different Stanford team than we've played. Uh, defensively, it's, uh, you know, it's almost like uh, spark plugs. They pulled out old ones, put in new ones, really, you know. On Saturday, I noticed some upperclassmen scout team guys got to suit up for the game. Is that sort of your way of rewarding them for hard work and practice? Um, 
I'm trying. Uh, I'm not sure who you're referring to. We basically, um, you know, we basically, because uh, we're only allowed 70, you know, uh, um, and then uh, uh, so basically it's, it's, you know, it's the guys you're going to play with, and then we'll have some scout team player of the week guys. If you're scout team player of the week, then, uh, then we dress you, you know. How valuable is it to you to retain, you know, committed, hardworking guys on scout team? Well, I think it's real important. That's where Taylor Comfort came from. You know, I mean, Taylor Comfort's having a great year. Uh, Parker Henry had a couple great years. I mean, uh, those guys are kind of byproducts of that, you know. So I think it uh, extends your resources as well as you get uh, uh, good looks on scout team. One of the things that kind of slid under the radar with that win was that you guys are bowl eligible now. I mean, obviously you have bigger bowls than just being bowl eligible, but what do you think it says about this team that they were able to do it in seven games? I think we've played real hard. We've played together, and I think we've gotten up for each game. I, we haven't been perfect. We have to get better each week, And I, but I do think as a unit we've been uh, committed to doing that. I think we want to get better at it and do it faster, and that's always kind of the battle, and, um, and it definitely will be this week. But, uh, you know, part of it is we have a very coachable team. This is one of the more coachable teams that I've ever been a part of, and uh, um, <clears throat> You know, just the simple, everybody's on the same page, everybody's pulling the same direction. I think some of that comes with coaching. I think, we, you know, we've got some uh, some really good coaches that uh, all uh, complement the efforts of each other and pull the same direction. I think we got players that way too. And I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's refreshing to go to work every day and all of a sudden you, you say something once and, and uh, you know, typically it starts it, it starts taking shape. There's been a lot of <coughs> quote unquote been in control of the Pac twelve north this year and now it's kind of your guys' turn. Do you think that is gonna be able to help you not fall into the other pitfalls that uh, other teams like Stanford, Oregon and Washington have? <coughs> it's difficult to say because everybody we have left is a really tough team. Everybody that we have left has beat somebody and everybody that we have left uh <coughs> Hell, most of them have been ranked at some point, you know, for what that's worth. So, yeah, they're all good, and they all can all get you, and they're all going to try. You talked about them being tough teams. I think right now the Pac-12 North is the only division in the country that has four ranked teams in its division. Why do you think there's not more made about how good this division is in particular? Uh, <coughs> shoot, I don't think about it very much. Um... I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. I think part of it is is um, <coughs> one thing that, that maybe helps or that, uh, you know, the media jumps on um, <coughs> and is somewhat understandable. Um, <coughs> in some conferences, you have some clear-cut front runners, some clear-cut team to beat. You know, this is uh, clear-cut the team to beat, has been over the years, like you <clears throat> have an Alabama or an LSU or somebody, and then, you know, you got Clemson and then <clears throat> um, some of those guys. And, uh, you know, our conference really doesn't have that. So it's not like you <clears throat> you got this uh, so much the comparison, this is a team to beat, and, the, you know, everybody's uh, um, wrapped up together, and it's kind of a slugfest. And I've said this for a long time. Um, <clears throat> if you had a tournament with the bottom of our conference with the bottom of anybody else's conference, we'd crush the bottom of theirs, you know. And <clears throat> what makes that uh, difficult and what makes that imposing is, um, you know, there's some uh, games throughout the year in other conferences where, you know, you're not as threatened, you're not in as great a jeopardy as, uh, as we are in this conference. <clears throat> in this conference, they can all get you, you know. <laughs> Stanford's allowed quite a few passing yards per game, but, but only seven passing touchdowns. What what kind of changes when, when the teams get into the red zone against them? And why are they so effective at kind of preventing passing touchdowns? No, they're just big. They're big and strong and aggressive, like they've always been. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure entirely. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, Utah kind of had an inclination to run it a little more, uh, so. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll try to we'll try to throw it in there then. You know, try to do it more often.
Have you seen any film of uh, J.J. or Sega Whiteside, their big tight end? If so, what do you see from him? Uh, he's a talented guy. <clears throat> you know, he's a, he's a huge target, but runs kind of like a receiver, has, you know, ball skills and can move around like a receiver. You know, he's kind of a uh, hybrid guy that they kind of move around and throw jump balls to. Mike, last, last spring when you, uh, when you started looking at the film of Gardner at East Carolina, did it strike you that he would uh, maybe uh, be especially well-suited for your offense? Um, well, I thought so. But the bigger concern really was <clears throat> how could he, how quick could he adjust? Is he an adjuster? And then he'd been to a lot of schools, so you say, well, he'd been to a lot of schools, so he's had a lot of practice adjusting. But he'd been to a lot of schools, so how good he's at adjusting? And then it um, uh, turned out he's pretty good, and he's developed, I think, over the time. Um, <clears throat> off the top, I thought he was tough. Off the top, I liked the way the ball came off his hand quick. Uh, off the top, I liked the way he was very competitive and he was accurate. And then, um, you know, he didn't take many tackles for loss. But he wasn't he, he wasn't a full-time starter there either, you know. Um, but then, you know, just looking at it, I was kind of curious why he wasn't. And then... Uh, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you get uh, enticed with somebody that's got <clears throat> some really good measurables or something and try to think you can get the one really good play every time, and it takes a while to do that. So I got, I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm just saying that, you know, um, I don't know uh, why he was overshadowed exactly, but he did play some, and he looked real competitive out there when he played. Among the guys you were looking at, did it kind of end up being no-brainer to, to uh, go after Gardner? Mm. Well, it was a no-brainer to go after him, but you never know what they're going to do. <clears throat> you know, if you go after one, you don't have any idea what he's going to do. Now, one guy, of course, I can't say his name, <clears throat> was at one school, talked about transferring, then changed his mind and didn't transfer, you know. Um, and then, uh, so you kind of get in the conversation with all of them that you like the best you can, if they'll talk to you. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then occasionally there's some that really want to talk to you that you're not quite as interested in, you know? <clears throat> so. You mentioned the fact that Gardner wasn't a full-time starter at this point last year. I don't believe he was starting. I don't think he started starting for that team until November. Uh, and now he's leading the Pac-12 in passing yards. What has he improved upon to, to make this big leap? Um, you know, I, I just think that uh, um, I because I don't, I don't know what went into their evaluation. There's different people that value different things, you know, at quarterbacks and different things at <clears throat> positions, and they're trying to accomplish different things on offense. So I don't really know, you know. Um, but... Uh, you know, in our case, he's just real competitive. He picked up the package real fast. He's extremely smart and elevated the play of the other people around him. And sometimes you end up on, uh, <clears throat> you know, your last go around, uh, your last hurrah. I, I haven't dealt with anybody more motivated. So I think the motivation and determination alone was a big part of it. So it seemed like when he was committed to Alabama, he was kind of uh, interested in becoming a coach after his last season. Do you, do you think that he would be a good future coach as he asks questions and kind of engage you on that aspect of it? Yeah, he'd be a really good coach. Uh, part of it, he's just a really smart person. I mean, he, he's, you know, none of my quarterbacks have been dumb. Some um, some not as smart as others. Uh, you know, Gardner's one of the smartest ones I've had. Let's go to the, <coughs> let's go to the phone line. Any questions on the phone line for coach? God, I hate this room. All right. I'm going to go upstairs and not cough for, for three hours, you know. Go, so. Any questions on the phone line for Coach? Bobby, your little man in that little machine, he's taking a nap. Yes. Yeah. Okay, back in the room. Uh, with Stanford running back Bryce Love kind of in and out of the lineup all year pretty much, does it kind of alter how you prepare for a uh, – a standout player when you don't know how much he might play or if he will play. Or how does that kind of alter uh, 
preparation. <coughs> you know, it doesn't. It doesn't a ton because they're going to play somebody at running back, and then, um, and that guy will be a quality guy, and so you have to account for it, you know. And then, <coughs> you know, you just do the best you can. I mean, one guy might be harder to tackle than the other, but you know what you have uh, control over is getting position. <clears throat> Last chance on the phone. Okay, go ahead, Penny. Uh, well, th this is not the fan question. I just want to ask a different question. Um, on more of a philosophical level with the air raid approach, uh, I know Desmond Patman on Saturday went as far as to say you're a mastermind in X's and O's. Uh, I was wondering, do, do any NFL coaches come to you? Because I know there's been a lot of <coughs> guys who played for you who put quarterbacks into the NFL who are having a lot of success with Jared Goff and Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield. Do, do, do coaches come to you in the offseason, maybe try to pick your brain about what you see in terms of how you attack defenses? Or anything like that? <coughs> we get a lot of guys in the offseason. We get a lot of guys in the offseason, and um, now I've got coaches all over, and I'll hear about uh, – you know, guys that come through here having gone to them as well. Um, uh, get a lot of foreign coaches. You know, uh, last spring we had uh, uh, we had two or three from Japan. We had uh, two from Mexico. Um, well, then we had the the three coaches from France and the guy from Italy. <coughs> Uh, but we get quite a few overseas that come through. Uh, then the NFL, um, everybody gets everybody's film now. So, you know, they get our film as fast as we get our film. And so, um, but you can see things out there that we run, no question, or things that, uh, <clears throat> that I've been involved with running since Iowa Wesleyan College. And then, um, you know, occasionally somebody will call and ask on this route or that route. You do it this way or you do it that way. You know, and then um, so yeah, you get you get you get some. And then um, um, <clears throat> you know, if you go to the NFL stuff, those guys are all real approachable, and of course invite invite me out to you know check out their camp and stuff like that, which I go to sometimes if they um, if I can squeeze it in. You know, because I, I like going to those. Uh, their camps and watching their stuff, but our camp starts right there, so you have to hurry and get into theirs and go to yours, you know. Were you able to get to any camps though, this summer? I didn't go to any this summer. What was the most uh, interesting thing you saw on the field uh, after the game Saturday? Oh, the most interesting thing. Um, <laughs> well, I guess just the general thing, because I was kind of locked into the game. I didn't know that they were going to rush the field, you know. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm walking, or, or uh, I'm walking um, across the field, and it was Bill or somebody grabs me and says, um, <clears throat> "says Look, they're rushing the field. We need you to get you on the twenty. So as soon as you shake his hand, let's get there real fast, because." <clears throat> They're gonna film some stuff, and and you know as that's happening, there's a bunch of people, so that's pretty cool. And then, um, you know, did the thing, and off we went. So. Anything else for coach? All right, then. All right. Uh, our fan question of the week this week came from Facebook, and it sounded kind of like a cry for help. So I figured. I'd ask you, uh, there's a woman who's concerned uh, about her husband and what fantasy football does to him. Uh, what are your thoughts on fantasy football and the impacts it can potentially have on people's lives? You know, I don't even know how to play fantasy football. Um, I don't even know how to play it. Um, but there are a ton of people in fantasy football. Like, I've got um, <clears throat> relatives that have never played any sports in the thick of fantasy football. Um, <clears throat> I've got friends, uh, you know, that are, you know, old friends, like uh, uh, grandparent types. Uh, well, it's, I'm shit, I'm a grandparent, so let's go a little even older than that. And so then um, uh, that are into it. And, uh, 
But we, uh, uh, I mean, I, I think it's good. I think it's all really good because um, <clears throat> I think it brings people together. It elevates the interest in football, which I think is good for uh, certainly football, certainly coaches, and really I think everybody because anything that brings people together I think is very good. And anything that brings uh, volumes of people together and, and uh, allows them to enjoy each other's time or company I think is good. And uh, so I, despite the fact I don't even know the rules of it and couldn't begin to describe it even in a general way, I think it's really good. But I also think it's like anything, it can be obsessive. So uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the wife either needs to shut his computer off or she needs to join a fantasy football league. But I'll get my daughters... If somebody's ahead in fantasy football, they'll start bragging, and you'll hear about it. And they'll, you know, and they'll race to the TV or the the computer or whatever to figure out who did what. And um, so, um, no, I I think it's uh, I think it's been really good. And um, and you're asking me really kind of on a subject I really know don't know very much about, but I, you know, I just hear it in the air and just hear it. Uh, <clears throat> people talking about it, people doing it, and just uh, general descriptions of, yeah, I have so-and-so on my team, and he did such and such, so, uh, you know, that type of thing. Well, I have so-and-so on my team, and he was injured, but he'll be back next week, you know, that type of stuff. So I uh, don't know how to play, but uh, people are having a lot of fun with it, and I think it's done a, a lot of great things for elevating uh, football and the product of football. Is this something you'd be interested in maybe after? I would test it, you know. I'd test it out and see, probably. Um, but uh, uh, I'd have to be kind of educated on how you do it and how you pick and who you sort it out. And then um, <clears throat> as far as other teams, I knew a lot more. You know, like uh, like right now, I, I know a lot about my team. I, I know a lot about our team. I know a lot about what we do. I don't know that much about other teams other than the ones we play. And um, and then in the off season, I'll, you know, get film and we'll check out a bunch of teams, whether college or NFL around the country that are doing schemes and things that I like just to check out and see and consider. Um, but when I was in law school, and law school can get um, – uh, well, let's just say this, that law school is not captivating every second. You don't go to your Carroll with this book bag, the most gigantic, you know, books bigger than the Gutenberg Bible and, uh, you know, a stack of them and march to your Carroll and say, oh, isn't this awesome? I get to sit here and then if I'm lucky, I'll have time to go get some kind of fast food. And um, <clears throat> so there would be some procrastination on my part and... Um, so I would read the sports page of the L.A. Times, cover to cover. I mean, I'd read everything just, you know, as an excuse to not go up those stairs. Then I'd read the Daily News, cover to cover. Then I'd read USA Today, cover to cover. And then I'd think, you know, there must be something in the entertainment section that would interest me just a little. And so then I, you know, so, and, and at that point... <clears throat> I knew, I knew a lot about all kinds of sports. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I could tell you who was where, who was going to do what, who was uh, this, and you know who was going to win, and why this team was going to win and not that team, and um, <clears throat> you know. So I was kind of an expert on it then, to be perfectly honest, and I haven't really been since. But um, but I do know about our team, and so I'll, you know, that's uh, so it's kind of a different deal when 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 you're out. If I was out, studied it like crazy, you know. I think I think I could break 500 in fantasy football. Yeah. Anything else for coach? All right, thank you, coach. All right, thank you.